I'm Linda Bamber, and I'm from the Overland Park area where my office is. Um, I have a unique business, I think, of course, because uh, I do work with women's breast health, and the name of my business, as you can see from my information, is BRAS, Breast Research Awareness and Support. And um, like everything, I started the business out of a need. Both my mother and my sister were diagnosed with breast cancer six months apart. So after that diagnosis, I was kind of struck. Oh, what do I do, you know? And so I did go to my doctors and they suggested I have a double uh, a prophylactic mastectomy. And that was 15 years ago, you know? So I chose not to do that and I was a teacher and I started studying and trying to learn some things to help myself and all of a sudden my friends are going, why don't you share this with other people? So that's how Bras was born. And right now I have 12 other businesses around the US that women have purchased and like the, the uh, idea of sharing breast health information with women. So it is a business that speaks to us specifically. And so what I'm gonna share with you are some easy, cost-effective, drug-free ways to protect your breast health. And I think that's one of the major things that I found in um, my search was that we're not taught anything. We're not given information so that we can protect our own breast health. We are told to only have our mammograms and wait and see, you know? And so the whole concept of my business is, no, you don't wait and see, you do something your whole life. There's something that you can do all of the time. And of course we have hormones and they change drastically every 10 years. So some of the things that we might do can change just according to our age group. I'd like to encourage us today to really be, you know, proactive here. I'm a former teacher of middle school children, so I, I get movement <laughs> and I like to have you uh, give me some information or ask questions if you need to. Uh, it is important to share with you uh, my, my main concept. Um, I have talked to a doctor who was a breast cancer surgeon, Dr. Christine Horner. I don't know if any of you have read her book, The Warrior Woman. And basically she says that uh, if we learn one thing that can protect our breast health, it can be very helpful in our statistics. But if we learn three or four things, that we can change our breast cancer risk astronomically. Now what does that mean? I don't know, but that's her phrasing, astronomically. So what I challenge you today is to see what you can do to change your risk astronomically. So I'm gonna have a show of hands here once in a while to see what you have learned and what's different because we wanna learn three or four things. We don't wanna just learn one thing, we wanna learn several things. So that's what my, my little booklet's all about. So I did forget to mention that my mother and sister are both breast cancer survivors, so I should say that. And so I just talked to my mom this morning and she's, she's in pretty good shape. So what I want you to do is kind of open your little booklet to the middle. And I'm gonna talk about the first couple things that I think are so unique that we are missing as women. Now I started this business over 11 years ago, so some, some women are learning a little bit more. But when I first started, there was not one woman in a large group that would know that there are eight teeth that can protect your breast health or harm your breast health. How many of you know that there are two teeth up and down on each side, our, our molars, our back teeth, that can actually be connected with breast cancer? Raise your hand if you knew that. She did, she's been to my class. <laughs> and you did. See, so if you get a larger group, so that is something that we do not know, is that our teeth can affect our breast health. So my worst example of this, I was in a chiropractor's office and I knew his wife had died of breast cancer and I w he asked me to come speak, you know, so I was presenting information and he shared with the group that he doesn't consider his wife died of that. He says she died of dental cancer. So when you hear that phrasing, you stop and you listen to what he has to say. And his story was that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer, so of course she'd gone through all the testing, a huge amount of testing before they started chemo and radiation and the surgery. And uh, during that whole process, she just went to have her teeth cleaned. There was not anything wrong. She wasn't feeling any problems whatsoever. But during the cleaning process, how was it that pus hit the technician shield with force and the ceiling with force from a tooth she did not even feel? So he pointed it out to me. And you can see there's a chart here. I told you the teeth. And he pointed out the tooth. And he goes, that tooth had been festering for how many years? 
and putting toxins directly into her breast. And it was not caught on any traditional testing methods. So his wife died of dental cancer. And you will know that if you look into uh, European cancer ideas, that they are, that's one of the biggest things that they do is work with our dental health for any kind of cancer. So there are men that can have prostate cancers, there's kidney cancers, it's just unbelievable. So it's all been charted, we know where every single tooth can be connected bioenergetically and biomeridians, and now they're actually starting to kind of creep in and say, oh, well these toxins can go down this direction, you know. So the main thing that we need to know is that our teeth are connected to our breast health. So I um, did discover in this whole search for myself, a different type of screening called thermography. And some of you might know about it, some of you might not, but it is a uh, picture, basically. So you're taking a heat uh, picture. It's called digital, digital infrared thermal imaging. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to kind of figure it out. So I'm just gonna jump right in and say, these are some images that I've taken over the years. And on this page for the dental health, what I'm showing you is a picture of a woman with her chin up. So the chin is green, and then all the way around her mouth you see red, and then it goes down here. What do you think that represents? Yeah, that's her dental infection. All of that was teeth, and you can see it moved through her body. So sometimes when I do pictures for women, I will see this inflammation, and then you can see it just trickle all the way down, and voila, there's a lump in their breast. So you can definitely see that connection in some women. So this is one of the main things that we really need to, to work on. Now what are some things that you could do? Have you heard of oil pulling? Okay, so oil pulling is a great one. I think that's kind of catching on. 10 years ago, nobody had ever heard of it, but now we're, we're learning about it a little bit. So um, you can use coconut oil, uh, olive oil or sesame oil, and swish for up to 20 minutes before you spit that out. And I now have women who have been back and forth to their dentist, you know, and they're reporting that my dentist doesn't care what I'm doing, he doesn't want to know, but he tells me that my gums and my teeth are so much better. You know, isn't that interesting? So I've got lots of feedback that that really is working on women to keep that uh, working. So if you actually have a, a dental infection that you think, um, the uh, idea with oil pulling came from India, and they know that gout has gone away, abscesses have gone away, stomach pains have gone away, you know, from, from just oil pulling. So if you think you have anything going on, consider it like a natural antibiotic and hit it hard for eight to 10 days and do it two times a day. And that has helped many people with that inflammation. So it's a great, pardon? One better than another. It just depends. I try to teach people how to muscle test. She asked me if one oil was better than the other. And I try to teach you in my office how to muscle test so that your body can tell you which oil is better. But sesame oil is a traditional oil used for thousands of years in India, so that's a good place to start. But then again, a lot of us have coconut oil or olive oil, you know. So start with what you have on hand. And then if you get to, uh, if you already know how to muscle test, uh, jump in and do it that way. Now, if you were here last hour, you probably heard all about the thought thyroid, okay? But I don't think it was mentioned that the thyroid can affect your breast health. And uh, um, again, sadly, my sister was one of those examples. She had thyroid problems two years before she developed breast cancer. What's interesting about the two year? Our medical doctors know that. If we dug, we would find out that the average for a woman to develop breast cancer after thyroid problems is two years. Wouldn't that be nice if they told us because over 18 million women have thyroid problems. So my sister was one of those. Isn't that interesting? So the information that was given last hour, maybe just to repeat just a little bit, but the uh, tests that medical doctors might suggest to you are very inconclusive. I stopped counting at 300 women. I've done over five or 6,000, but 300 women told me that they had had the testing done for the thyroid and it was, they were fine. There was nothing that they needed to take. And most of those women, and one in particular, uh, was standing there uh, talking to me, she had no eyebrows, her hair was falling out, she was 100 pounds overweight, and she had great big pimples on the back of her arms, which are all classic thyroid symptoms. So any doctor should have been able to look at her and know that she had thyroid problems. So I have her picture right here, and when I took a picture with her chin up, what do we see right here? 
she had a goiter, she had thyroid problems. And when she saw her own picture, she yelled, it's dead. <laughs> I'll never forget that because how could I put that idea into someone's mind? I did not. All on her own, she's going, oh my gosh, my thyroid, it's dead. And that was really true. She was getting, her thyroid was so cold, the goiter was so problematic. She, she had every single one of these symptoms. Yet she had had her thyroid check, her thyroid numbers and tests done, and she was told that she was okay. There was nothing that could be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this bottom picture right here was this lady. So again, I stopped counting at 300 women who had thyroid problems. So just like uh, Mike mentioned, we need to look at our symptoms a lot. So I included a list of symptoms for you. And if you're having a lot of those symptoms, you need to go somewhere and get something done. Now there is a misprint at the bottom. Someone always thinks they know more than uh, I do when I send it in, and they changed the 98.6. I had it 97.6. It's supposed to be 97.6. They give you one degree variation. So your body's 98.6. If it's 97.6 when you do the basal Barnes test, then you know you have thyroid problems. That is the best test ever. You just need a thermometer to tell you if your thyroid is, is not working correctly. So I'd like to stop for just a minute. I'd like to show you one exercise that might be life-changing for your thyroid. Ready for this? Okay, so you're just going to take your hands like this and go across your neck. Gee, is that hard? <laughs> Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Can you put your hand on the steering wheel and drive like this? Mm -hmm. Is this something you could do because it cleans out your thyroid? Yeah. Okay, think about this. Okay, what if your thyroid in this picture is very red or inflamed or even cold? Aren't you activating it, cleansing it, detoxifying it? You're getting some movement out of that. So I wish I had enough money for a double blind study, obviously, but I've had two women who came to my office and we saw pictures like this where their thyroid was not working correctly. And for some amazing reason how things work out, they had already taken their thyroid temperature and they had a chart for the last month on what their temperature was. And it was below 97.6. We decided to do the thyroid exercises and they continued to take their temperature for the next month. Guess what happened? It went back to normal. One degree in one month. That's better than a supplement. Okay? So, she did it about a couple minutes, or they did it about a couple minutes, uh, two times a day at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the whole month. Now, can it get any easier than that? You know? About two minutes a couple times a day. Yeah, could you have more or less? Is there an issue with that doesn't more seem to be, yeah. I don't know, that's why I said I need a double blind study, you know. Yeah. But isn't that interesting to think that we could do something so simple and maybe not even have to take a supplement? Of course, there are some good supplements, but that's what's uh, problematic today is that we are, are, maybe our thyroid could be having, I forgot to mention, where do you think the tooth goes to first? If you have a tooth on this side, these teeth that bother our breasts, well, they have to go to the thyroid or the parathyroid first, and then they drizzle down to the breast on the same side and then move through our body. So a lot of times you are detoxifying um, dental toxins, which could be the mercury, could be any of the materials, it could be a bacterial infection, could be a combination of both. So we just need to think that uh, about these two teeth and how, you know, they're also going to be uh, problematic with our thyroid also, our parathyroid. So another idea that's so important that happened to my sister probably uh, is the fact that she didn't have any iodine or enough iodine in her body when we talk about the thyroid. So there is a simple test that I have uh, for you and you'll just turn back a page and you can see the iodine. Uh, it's labeled iodine right here. So what happens when we don't have enough iodine? Our bodies are very hormone problematic. We have an iodine receptor on every single cell in our body. So what if we don't have enough iodine and those receptors aren't filled? They fill naturally, sorry, it is natural, but they will fill up with mercury, chloride, fluoride, or bromide. 
they are all the same uh, atomic weight sim similarity. They're not the exact weight, but they're similar atomic weights. You remember that from high school chemistry? You know, we don't, but that's how that is actually working. So our bodies will just slurp in all of these toxins because we don't have enough iodine. So gals, I'm in the middle of kind of writing a book because guess what I found from interviewing women as they came in? When you look at a bottle of iodine, glucose iodine, most of the time it will say between one and three drops. We're very limited on the amount that the medical community or the, uh, you know, that we are told that we can take. But guess what women in the 50s and 60s did? Pardon? Glass. They actually made their own suntan lotion with Lugol's iodine and baby oil and rubbed it all over their bodies all summer long. Now how's that possible? We can only take three, three drops a day, but they can put it on their bodies all summer long and not have any problems. So there's something with our iodine dispensing methods here, so I'm trying to experience that a little bit more and learn a lot more about it. So just uh, off the top of my head, or you know, when we think about it, we have uh, gotten some information last hour about how all of the seafoods are very good for our, our thyroid. And basically, um, the Japanese women take 100 times more iodine than we do, just in their foods every day, daily. So we are extremely deficient. We used to get our iodine in our milk products from our grass-fed cows and things like that. And we're not getting that source anymore whatsoever. So we are just completely very, very low in iodine. And then again, don't forget what happens when you have no iodine. Your body fills up with chloride, fluoride, bromide, and mercury. So what are we full of? Not iodine, probably. <laughs> so that can be very problematic. So one way that you can test right here is to do basically a, an iodine patch test. And so you can take some iodine, just use the Lugol's iodine, and you can put it on your wrist and kind of watch to see how fast your body absorbs that. Okay, ladies, I've, I give it at my office and I'll have women paint it on their breast. It's supposed to stay on about 24 hours. I've had women driving home call me, you know, they're evidently looking down. <laughs> as they're on their way home. And after 10 minutes, they're saying, it's gone. I can't see that patch anymore. So again, are we iodine deficient or what? Okay. Now, I'd like you to read the top paragraph right here to yourself, or maybe I can see if I can read it out loud. Basically, the reason that we, these women are, uh, our, our women are getting breast cancer, the thyroid gland maintained by iodine controls body temperature. Low body temperature allows cancer cells to proliferate. How many of you have cold hands and feet? Look at the position we're putting ourselves in. Okay, for years, it might go on for years, but sometimes our bodies are gonna have problems at different rates and speeds. So 18 million of us have thyroid problems, 18 million of us or more probably have iodine shortages. So that's a big, big clue to us. So we wanna have some iodine in our system d definitively is the way to say that. Now somebody will have to tell me what the time is. Um, I have done 12 hour breast health workshops. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. I hadn't seen it, I've been sitting over there. So, uh, I can talk a lot and about a lot of different subjects, and this is only one of the little booklets I have, so I've got lots of information for you ladies. So if you just want to tear, uh, turn the page and go the opposite direction, we've got a bra, obviously that's what my company's named after. But, yes, okay. Uh, I've tried the uh, but Linda had put it all over her body, and I just took a little bit, and I, I reacted to it. So I took it into our office and we did a bio uh, body testing with it. I can take the iodine that he was using, that he was recommending, but I cannot take the Lugol's. Yes, there are some people, that's why I try to teach you how to do muscle testing so that you know if your body can handle it. Mm -hmm. Lugol's is the most common iodine. It has at least 180 years of history, and but there are other kinds of, of iodine. Now, one thing I didn't mention too is that when somebody comes to my office that has mm -hmm. uh, some tenderness or an aches, of, and aches and pains and sometimes lumps, uh, I do love a topical application of iodine. It actually has taken away lumps almost overnight just putting iodine on top of your breast. So it, iodine is huge. And then there is another source, drcircus.com, and he basically has uh, written a book and several articles, 
And when someone comes to him who actually has a breast cancer, he, instead of doing surgery, his suggestion is topical iodine on their breast, maybe 20 times a day, plus magnesium, plus uh, some uh, herbs, uh, CBD oil, um, baking soda. And so I have a list in my office, you know, and a handout for you on that. Didn't have time to talk a lot about it today, but it would be drcircus.com to look that up. So iodine is really one of my favorite things uh, for all kinds of um, breast problems. And usually uh, that just uh, helps your thyroid. It just sucks it all in, you know, too. So uh, don't forget that you need to learn about iodine to protect your breast health. So uh, thank you for that question, that, that answered a lot of things. So another thing that we'd like to talk to women about is just their bras. So obviously when you come to see me, I can do some imaging and some scanning for you. And so one of the first things women are always uh, actually doing is saying, hey, look at my bra, is this any good or not? <laughs> you know. So it's only something that women can tell you about. You know. But we are wearing very dangerous bras. Okay, so if you're wearing an underwire bra, you are causing yourself some breast health problems. So it has been studied, and it was right here in Kansas City that Charles Graham discovered that uh, EMFs from all of our cell phones and everything around us today will uh, cause problems with testosterone and estrogen. So need I say more? So when you're wearing a, an underwire, what do you have? An antenna right there. Okay, so to kind of back this up, in my small office, I've had a lady come who was wearing her cell phone in her bra <laughs> with underwires, and she had two to three, they were trying to decide whether it was two or three kinds of breast cancer right underneath the cell phone. I've seen that on the internet, but I was shocked when somebody presented in my office with that problem. I've had another lady who changed jobs and she had to wear her cell phone you know, in her pocket for part of that job. Within just a short period of time, she had developed a huge ovarian cyst, okay? Now the worst one, I had an older lady who uh, was a little bit crippled, she was about 86, and so she had a lifeline alert. And so she walked a little bit like this and set, you know, a little bit crooked. Guess what happened to her a year after her lifeline alert was added to her breast cancer under the lifeline alert? So what about the new Fitbits? Ooh, that kind of gives me chills, ladies. We can't do that either. So now I have people presenting with all kinds of fatigue and adrenal problems and thyroid problems, and things are just getting accentuated and worse and worse and worse. And then somebody tells them to stop wearing their Fitbit, and guess what happens? All those symptoms go away. So, and then when you've got the bra on with the underwire, you've just made matters much, much, much worse. Now, I also have women who bring their 16, 17 year old daughters. And what, are the, what is that age group doing? They're wearing the underwires to bed and holding the cell phones in bed, and sometimes in the bra, but they're sleeping with their cell phone all night long wearing their bra. I'm not sure where they heard the idea, but some celebrity told them. I tried to look it up, but the, the, one of the moms said, oh yeah, some celebrity told them you'll get saggy if you don't wear your bra. So they wear their bras to bed today. Yes. So I know this is about women, but I'm wondering too about if men, because a lot of men have their oh, yes. cell phones in their mm -hmm. pockets, or are they seeing sure. developing? Sure. What do we have? The lowest uh, sperm count in history. Oh. 40 to 60 percent wow. less sperm count than we've ever had before. So we have the laptops that the guys sit on their laps, and then they wear their cell phones too. Yes. Okay. So all kinds of problems with that. So, and they have belts, maybe with buckles on them, you know, so they've got the metal idea too. So it is a huge thing that we are doing. So we have to kind of be a, little, a lot more careful of things that we're carrying on our, per, on our person. Very, very important. I'm kind of skipping around, but the next page, can you see uh, the two pictures here? I've made a list of foods that we have to be aware of. Uh, all kinds of foods that you might want to consider, but one of the main ones that you want to keep out of your diet is the uh, diet uh, aspartame. Okay, and many of the sugars. So I had this lady come, and I haven't explained thermography a lot. I'm not here to sell thermography. I'm just to tell you, just to show you a little bit about some pictures that I've taken and your health. But uh, when I take a picture, can you just kind of figure out on your own which picture is better than the other? 
You know, do I even need to explain it to you? You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. So the lady came and she was really, really red and inflamed. And isn't what we're doing today all about inflammation and keeping inflammation under control? So I visit with everybody that comes in to try to figure out what is going on in their, their lifestyle. She was drinking eight to 10 cans of Diet Pop a day. Not drinking much water, <laughs> you know. So this may be an extreme example, but uh, you know that made a difference. She got off for just two weeks, and her inflammation changed. Now that isn't even counting the ladies that have other kinds of health problems from that. So we do know that your food uh, affects your breast health very, very much. Now another example. Um, not sure I can come up with the name of it. I believe it's called myaspartameexperiment.com. I got it, there you go, a long name, but myaspartameexperiment.com. We do have uh, amazing uh, photos from a woman who tried to figure out why, how she could talk her family out of not drinking Diet Pop. It's like, man, I just wouldn't buy it, but she went to great lengths, and she decided to do an experiment. She was a math major, uh, master's in mathematics, and so she dev devised this intricate uh, test on mice, and she figured out how to feed them the equivalent of three quarters of a can of pop a day, diet pop, but in a powdered form. And then she tracked these mice, or these rats, through her experiment. Guess what happened? You got fat. Well, yeah. Uh, I think it was 40% of the women had uh, mammary gland lumps and growths so large they slept on them as pillows. Wow. All of the males became blind and developed prostate problems. Mm -hmm. And her experiment only lasted two years because they all died, you know. And so it, the list goes on and on. So she has those pictures on the website. So if you need anybody to be talked out of drinking Diet Pop or aspartame products, that's a good website, myaspartameexperiment.com. Ex, my mm -hmm. So it's very uh, interesting, uh, the things that we can or cannot do with our diet. Now, one statistic that I didn't mention with Dr. Christine Horner that I told you about earlier she gave us the idea that we need to be learning. You know, three or four ideas can change our breast health problems astronomically. She learned the hard way herself. She was a breast cancer surgeon, and when she first started, all of her clients were my age, 65-ish, you know, and um, a little bit older. And then by, her 20, by the time her 25-year career went by, all of her clients were 30 and 40. So she knew that something had changed in our society. And it's these things I'm telling you about. We have changed everything. Our children are raised on pop for breakfast or you know, wherever we wanna go with that. You know? So what we do eat makes an absolute difference in all kinds of health for everyone involved. So this is just you know, a few little things on your breast health I thought might be interesting for you. So we're gonna keep going on and Somebody tell me, uh, I don't know when I got started, I guess I didn't look over here, but lots of uh, little information about um, deodorant. How many of you are wearing a clean deodorant? Yay, okay. Wasn't 100% yet, but isn't that amazing? What, what could change? So of course we've been told that our deodorants are fine, but do you really want aluminum right here when it's known to cause breast problems? But there's positive medically that there's no way that aluminum under our arms can get into our breasts. There's positive. So you can find that all over the internet. I just can't handle that thinking, you know? And make it easy. You're going to get some clean deodorant. So I actually had a woman come in. I, I learned so much from my clients. And she goes, well, are you, aren't you just wearing coconut oil? I'm going, no. <laughs> Hadn't heard of that one. I took her advice and for five years I've just been wearing plain coconut oil. You know, so I have my own little bottle and if I need it, you know, that's what I wear. So I wanna encourage you to get the cleanest deodorant that you can. There are all kinds of toxins in our deodorant. And sometimes even the, the things that we think are going to be clean, you read a little bit deeper on the label and they really have something in them. So really, one of the best things you can do is make your own deodorant, pass that around. You know, have some family recipes that you're sharing and make your own deodorant. Uh, somebody else told me they like vinegar. 
that one didn't work for me, <laughs> you know, but uh, to each their own. So just try some different things. Uh, you might be surprised uh, how easy it can be. Was the vinegar uh, distilled? Or it was the uh, apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, obviously everybody has to kind of find their own need to do that. But we do need to be very careful about what we're putting on uh, underneath our arms. Uh, on this particular picture, this is a side view of a woman. Do you think this looks correct? How should we look in this thermography example? Yeah, we shouldn't have any heat down our underarm area, should we? That's kind of common sense, you know. If we have a little bit of heat, it should just be up in our deodorant line area where we're gonna be sweating and there's bacteria naturally in our body. So this woman was completely over the top. She was uh, wearing, um, toxic underarm deodorant three times a day. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so on the opposite page, this lady had a completely different problem. She had had breast cancer nine years earlier. And when I saw her picture, I kind of, in my mind, ooh, you know, what can we do for this? So her lymph nodes were really plugged up too. You can see all the heat patterns from these. So I taught her dry brushing and within a couple of weeks, she came back for a free scan. I can do that for you to see if anything's working that we're working on. And we could see that there was a huge difference in just doing some dry brushing. So raise your hand if you do dry brushing. Yay, you got, yeah, okay. So you can take that dry brush. Do you have it out, do you have dry brushes out here? Okay, yeah. So there's several videos on doing the dry brushing and basically you're gonna start at your feet and just brush four or five strokes on the bottom of your feet and you're gonna work up towards your heart. So it's, you know, you're getting a little awkward, you know, but you can do that. And I have found that it's one of the things that women who are a little bit handicapped or I've had a few women in wheelchairs that, you know, there's not a lot of exercises. They can't bounce on a rebounder. You know, they don't have a ball that might be helpful for those lymph node movements. So the dry brushing is actually fairly good for them to do. And then there are other products that would be lymph node detoxifiers that can be very, very helpful for somebody in this situation here. So what are you supposed to look like? It's probably time to introduce thermography just a little bit. If you wanted to turn to the very first page here, I've got four small pictures. And so I do offer a thermography service. And uh, basically when you come in, I'm gonna be just taking some of the pictures that I showed you here, and I will send those to medical doctors for interpretation. And we have 37 medical doctors on staff, and they will get their uh, interpretation uh, back to us within about a week. Now obviously every medical doctor does not love thermography, but you know, women love thermography, okay? And so when a 40 year old comes in who has not had a mammogram, uh, she's gonna have perkier uh, breasts for the rest of her life or as, for as many times as she can because as she can do the thermography and likes it. Because when a woman comes and does a, a mammogram, they are actually designed so that they break down our breast tissue. We cannot, they cannot see through dense breast tissue. So over the years we get limper and limper because that's their, you know, that is part of the goal for them to be able to see. So there is now a new move, move, movement and it's called Are You Dense? And someone had had 10 mammograms and was told each time, she said she got a happy gram, and she was told each time that her breasts were fine. Yet the, the 11th uh, mammogram, she was told she had stage three, maybe stage four breast cancer. And so she's asking her doctor about this, and he said, well, you have dense breasts. So her response is, what's that mean? How many of you know what dense breasts mean? Okay, have you been told you have dense breasts? Yes. So when a doctor sees our mammograms the very first time, they know whether we have dense breasts or not. They get that report back. But before this movement, they did not have to tell us whether we had dense breasts and what it means. So this, this woman has uh, taken the time to go through state legislatures and about uh, 20 some, excuse me, 30 some different states have ratified uh, the law that tells our doctors, that makes our doctors tell us that if we have dense breasts, that the mammograms can actually be more dangerous for us. They will miss up to 50% of the breast cancers. Did you know that? That's a little scary, isn't it? Because about 40%, again, have dense breasts, 
and then that will miss, our mammograms will miss up to 50% of those breast cancers in our dense breasts. So guess what happens when you decide to have a thermogram and you have dense breasts? I just have to touch a button. <laughs> click, 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 and they can see through the density. What happens when you have dense breasts in a mammogram? Pressure, 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 more radiation through that. So they're squeezing you at least a quarter of an inch thick when you get that mammogram, and then they're putting more radiation in you if you have the dense breasts. So I hope that's something that's kind of interesting to you. So the top picture up here is how they want a normal person to look, and she actually has dense breasts. So that's an example of why I was telling you about the dense breasts. Then we can see different patterns of heat, and so the next three ideas are fairly concerning in these women. So they're looking to see if one side is radically different, and if there's heat spots in different areas. Now ladies, I don't know if you saw my little write-up to attend this workshop, but there are 85 kinds of breast cancer. I'm still blown away by that, you know. And I didn't really know that. I had started this and thought I, you know, had done quite a bit of study, and, but I interviewed for a little radio program I have, Susan Weed, who's written uh, Breast Cancer, Breast Health, and she is saying that there are 85 kinds of breast cancer. So there's nothing perfect in our world. We have to be vigilant. We have to know some small things to do. We have to be very careful with our testing and get second, you know, uh, opinions sometimes if, if we're told that something is wrong. So uh, I hope that you can uh, think that through just a little bit if you or anybody in your family has ever, you know, had a negative connotation with a mammogram, you know, and, and because you're not getting a lot of times, uh, a lot of time, they will kind of put you in a, a mode to do something very quickly, although breast cancer sometimes takes eight to ten years to manifest. So don't be rushed if you're given something negative. Really think it through and take your time. So to kind of wrap this up, I want to show you some exercises, lady and ho ladies, and hopefully we'll have some fun with this. Uh, my mother uh, chose to have uh, a lumpectomy, and my sister did also. And then my mother had radiation, and my sister had chemotherapy. But my mother neglected to tell my sister and I that after the radiation, that her breasts were hard as a rock and beat red. And we didn't know that for a year and a half. My sister and I were school teachers. What do we know about breast cancer, you know? Uh, so when she told us, we were just like, oh, go to your doctor, you know? So she'd been to him before and told him the problem, but this time my dad went back with her and was very insistent. And basically her doctor told her that she had been cooked by the radiation. That was the word he used. I'm sorry, you've been cooked. Nothing we can do, sorry. So luckily, a nurse rescued my mom and she showed her one exercise. And I wish I knew the nurse's name because she started my business. One exercise started bras, okay? So I'm gonna share that exercise with you and then the other exercises that I developed because in one week, my mother's redness was gone with a very simple exercise that had been there a year, and the redness had been there a year and a half. And then when I put some different exercises together and had my mother do them, the hardness from being cooked by radiation was gone in a month. Now ladies, what's happened since then is I've had 12 other women kind enough to call me back and say, guess what? My fibrocystic lumps went away overnight with my exercises. And then one lady actually had a lump that was the size of a, you know, her thumb, a cyst probably, and it was underneath her arm right here. Gals, that cyst had been there for 11 years. So she came to a workshop just like this, and it was an evening one. She called me at 10 o'clock the next morning. That lump was gone. So what are we missing? Wow. We're told never to touch our breasts, I guess, you know, pretty much. We're never told to, taught to examine them. I mean, we have to kind of learn some of these things. So now we're gonna go one step further and I'm gonna tell you to massage your own breasts, okay? So I'm gonna show you these exercises and I show everybody that comes to my office, they may not have a lump or a concern, but I want them to know this so that they can pass it on to somebody else that they might be around that might have a problem. So maybe that's your idea today. Does anybody have a lump? Okay, 
So you might have some feedback for us at some point in time. But see, what we have is 10 people who are great learners who are going to pass that on to somebody else. So here's all the exercises. So I hope you're OK to do these with me, or I'll just uh, fire off. So what I'm going to have you do first is basically just kind of splay your fingers open. And these uh, exercises are pretty abbreviated. So start up at here and just splay down the side of your throat and off your shoulders and your neck. Now, how many of you recognize this for an energetic exercise? OK. So this takes off negative energy. And this is where we store a lot of our uh, tension. So when women come in, we're really red here. But we could have dental inflammation. So we're doing a little bit of work there, too. So a couple minutes of this is really a good lymph node exercise. So then the next one I want you to do is the thyroid one that I've already showed you. So you're going to do this one. But I just really wanted to extra, er, um, accentuate the idea for the thyroid. So you do this one for a couple of minutes. OK, so we're getting some movement here. Then the next one is the most important one. And this is the one that the nurse taught to my mother. Just cross your hands and right underneath your collarbones, do feather-like strokes. How hard is that? OK, my mother did this exercise. And in seven days, her redness went away that had been there a year and a half. So what's this exercise do? What do you think? Stimulating something. Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes. This is the most important area for your lymph nodes. It really does a good job cleaning here. So you can do that for a couple of minutes. So if you don't have any concerns, these are just good ideas to do in the shower for five or six minutes. You know, just accentuate what you're doing. Or maybe sit by your bed at night and do these once in a while. But if you have a lump or some tenderness or an area of concern, then try to put these exercises together and do them about 30 minutes. And especially in a hot tub or bathtub, you get that hydrotherapy as you're working on these exercises. That has been a huge uh, success with women having lumps go away overnight. So the next exercise in this series is just under underneath your arm. So you can kind of see that when I do have a picture of that. So you're going to go underneath your arm. And when you come in and you get a picture from me, we can see if you have any hot spots or lymph nodes. You know, And sometimes one side will be really hot and the other side won't. So we'll know what to accentuate and which side to work on the most. So these pictures from thermography are worth their weight in gold. Women come in and they can see that inflammation. And then we can give them a step-by-step -step process of what to work on when they go home. And then I always invite you to come back to see if there's been some changes that your efforts have been worthwhile. And again, that's kind of the opposite of what we've learned the rest of our lives. So we'll just do something and then we'll wait and see. So we just want to be proactive. So that's bras, being proactive. So I've showed you the lymph node exercises. The next one is a fun one. I want you to just stimulate your nipples. You know, just pinch, ripple, get some movement, circle this way. So Suzanne Summers, I think she always says pinch, you know, whatever. But get some movement behind your nipples. And I'm assuming that, you know, women do have breast cancer behind their nipples. So I'm assuming that by doing these exercises that we're pushing some toxins into the open lymph nodes that we've already created and opened up. Now, step three and four on this little booklet uh, is going to be six second squeezes. And I'm going to show you how to go up and down and in and out and around and kind of a left turn and a right turn. So what I want you to do is just put your hand on your rib cage and then just right on top of your breast. OK? And you're just going to squeeze for six seconds. Now, I really have had several women say, like a mammogram? <laughs> and I'm just like, no, that's 50 pounds of pressure. I don't think so. We're just saying lightly, OK? And then you're going to kind of anchor and put your hand up on your chest and then cup your breast and push up. You know, So you're going to hold it up. So think about that gal that had the big lump right here. Would she ever be in that position? Probably not. I think this is one of the main ones that kind of released that lump that had been there for 11 years, OK? So the next one is to put your hand in the center of your breast and push in. So you're just going to go in and then out. OK? So in and out. And six seconds, you know, but I'm just kind of showing you the idea. And the next one would be to go around. And your nipple might engorge just a little bit. No problem. It's just getting movement and changing some things. And then you're going to turn to the left and then turn to the right. OK? So ladies, these are kind of my signature exercises. And I appreciate you doing the exercises with me. I'm going to finish up now, I promise. I had a 78-year-old lady who I was showing the exercises to. And she goes, oh, don't worry. George will do them for me. 
<laughs> so thanks for coming today, ladies. Hope you get some help on those exercises. <laughs> Let me add one thing. Sure. sure you don't know. A lot of it has to do with your immune system. <laughs> and you showed me how to do this. I think that's oh. really important. For um, cool. Angelita just uh, reminded me that uh, I have shown some exercises for your um, thymus before, you know, and so a lot of times, yeah. And so for your immune system. So we can see on the thermogram if your thymus is blue, it's not functioning very well. It's very low functioning. And so I'll show you right there. So when you come, you know, hopefully, uh, if you ever get a thermogram, you'll be shown some of these ideas and you'll have a personal look at all of yours and we can highlight what you need to do in particular. So it's very individualized. So uh, again, my office is in Overland Park. I do thermography. I can do just breast thermography. I can do upper body thermography. Uh, and that would be about uh, 30 pictures. And that cost on that is 315. The breast thermography is 195. And then you can can do full bodies for 415 and there's 50 pictures. So they can, there's a list of things of information they can give you with a non-invasive screening. So ladies, I have a combination of thermography and breast health. Yes. Are you open yep. questions? Yep. I was curious, I have two questions. One is, do you do thermography on young children? I can. I have had a nine-year-old girl with a breast that's, lump. That's beneficial to start. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have mostly done it when there's a, a problem, you know, but I really like it when mothers bring in their teenage daughters. Mm -hmm. That's a great time to start learning mm -hmm. on that. And then my second question is, uh, what's your thoughts on breasts of different sizes? Like, um, so I'm a nursing mom, and over six years I've been nursing, and I just, there's a very big difference between my breast size, and a lot of it is because of the, the milk comes in stronger on one side. Mm -hmm. You know, our bodies are completely different, and sometimes we actually grow that way. That is not an unusual problem. There are a lot of women who come in who have a, some, a, one breast, obviously, a different size than the other. And my worst example, I had a, I did meet a young girl who had a breast uh, different, uh, different sizes, and so her doctors had suggested that she have a mammogram six uh, months apart during her teenage years. So she was 18, and she'd already had about 16 mammograms. So I think they have caused some problems in her at that stage. That's when you're growing the most and changing. So our breasts are kind of like our feet. We're going to have different sizes for some unknown reason. So unless there's a particular, you know, if you're feeling a lump or, you know, seeing something different or, or whatever, that, that should not be a cause of concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So the massage therapist is able to do some of the lymph node movement, maybe that I was kind of showing you on yourself. So yes, I have several cards from uh, lymph node massage therapist. There's some people who do specialize in that, and that's a very good thing to do too. Mm -hmm. Yes, great comment. Anybody else? Yes. Just with everything you're saying of the dangers of the underwire bras and everything, what are the benefits of bras? Like, because I feel like money for the inventors. <laughs> yes. So it is strictly just an ornament of, you know, we're, we're just wearing them for, you know, a, an apparel, you know. So the apparel business is what millions and billions of dollars worth, you know. So there is no actual need for that. And actually, women in countries who do not wear bras have no breast cancer. And as soon as they move into a country, and of course, they are changing their lifestyles, but as soon as they start wearing bras, they start having the same breast cancer rates as women who, you know, wear bras all the time. Sports bras are great. Pardon? Sports bras, because they don't have any wires now. Uh, but some sports bras are okay and some are not. So if you wear a sports bra that pushes you in like this, that is actually negative because it's messing up your lymph nodes. But if you can get a bra that kind of pushes you out just a little bit and actually has some shape. So some of the sports bras, they kind of hold their shape. They can you know, almost stand up on a, on a table and they're the shape of a bra. Those are pretty good, but the ones that are flat are a no-no. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. anything metal on a bra, the snaps in the back or anything? 
those aren't as bad, yeah. you know, but I, here. I heard a health talk and it was about those cases for the phones to protect from the, the rays. Yes. Do, do you have a connect? What is the name of it so I can Google it? Oh, okay. on that one, I don't know, but I have a brand called Altera. Do you have uh, any, um, so what's your brand? You draw, okay. Yeah, I figured he had some. Yeah. So there's several brands of things that you can put on your cell phones to protect you from that. Well, you can buy a case that would protect mm -hmm. you. Yeah, and there's cases, there's all kinds of things if you start looking. Yeah. And then, ladies, I, I never have enough time to talk, but the other favorite thing for mine, uh, instead of, you know, I, I do have my cell phone neutralized, but quartz jewelry is excellent to neutralize. So wear some natural stone jewelry. I have a whole workshop on that. And why you should have diamonds. <laughs> diamonds protect your breast health, ladies. So come to another workshop. Why you want diamonds for, on your Christmas shopping list. <laughs> Anything else, gals? I know we're getting kind of late, but yes. I just have a quick question. My son-in-law's um, grandmother was just diagnosed with, uh, I guess, advanced breast cancer. She's chosen to have nothing done. Um, she just wants to be healthy and you know do it naturally and just go to the. She's a believer in Israel. Mm -hmm. So is there something like this? I'm going to mail this to her mm -hmm. uh, in Israel. Do you have any connections? For people in there Israel? probably are because the company that I work with uh, has a, a strong presence in Israel. So uh, I can give you some personal information on the company to contact, and you could look that up. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to my website, and it's on the business card. So, um, you know, and I have the places that my um, business opportunities are located around the U.S. So, all right, ladies, I wish I could talk more. I'm too much of a talker, but thank you. Thank you.